All right, with it being a new year, we need to start fresh. And to do that, I need to confess a gaming sin. I played and finished Beautiful Joe on the DS before ever touching the original. How? I have no idea. But that's why we're here today to right these wrongs and finally play this true gem of a game. But first, this is combat overview. In this series, I go over the general controls to the game's main mechanic or mechanics, who or what we use those tools on, and this thing how it all comes together. A bit more in depth, but that's what we do. So Beautiful Joe is a straight to the point, arcadey beat em up action game with great enemy design, standout art direction, great replayability, and unique meter mechanics based off controlling a movie. So let's dig in. Scroll a punch, and down scroll uppercut. Triangle a kick, down triangle will have you slide, in the air you'll do red hot kick. I felt like punches are good to move enemies around, and kicks are good to move you around. Both great options for different situations. Now there's no unique enders chaining into them at different points, but they do combo into each other with ease, and we'll see their extra uses in a bit. For our defenses, we don't have a guard to use, but we have this dodge. Because just like the tutorial says, a real heel doesn't do blocks. He dances out of trouble. This gives you an idea of what we're working with. So holding left thumbstick up will have you shift upwards to dodge low attacks. And down will have you duck, dodging high attacks. And you'll know which way an enemy is attacking by looking out for these skull icons. You can take it a step further and pay attention to the unique animations for each of those attacks but that's for a later time. Now after you fully evade their attack or little combo, they'll be put into a dazed dizzy state. Keeps them still for a bit, opens them up and gives you the chance to beat them up. Now this is more of a pseudo defensive option but since you can't walk through enemies and it all takes place on a single plane, you can nudge and push enemies around. Great to give yourself space to work with or separate a crowd. You can also jab an enemy who doesn't have armor to stop their attack startup. Helps keep certain enemies in check so you won't have two of them trying to attack you from both sides at once creating little awkward dodge timings. There's some more awesome defensive stuff in the shop, but they are the most expensive stuff in the whole game pretty much and you'll see why in a second. Onto a HUD, parts is our health of course, movie reels underneath is our VFX meter. This has multiple uses both for offensive and defensive plays. So the very first one is slow by holding L1. Like its name says, everything will move at a snail's pace. You, enemies, and objects, which is important to know. So defensively, we can slow to give you time to reposition around the stage, or to give you time to react to enemies, high or low attacks. Now to use offensively, once you fully dodge enemies' attacks and leave them dazed, you can go into slow to follow this up with the base attacks, which now we'll see that extra use they have. Because punching enemies will send them horizontally, or directly up with the uppercut. Great to crowd control by setting that single enemy into a row of goons. And kicks will send enemies diagonally. So great to send them far off and hit those airborne enemies. Slows also great to hit projectiles, bullets, missiles, and cannon shots can be made easier to reflect back to sender. And if you slow time as bombs or missiles explode, extend that time it explodes, letting you get the most damage out of it. Holding R1 will go into mock speed, now in my runs, I felt like it didn't have as much play time like slow, but still has its uses. For one, its extra speed is great to move around fast because Joe does move a little slow. So great to move from point A to point B. It's great to land fast consecutive hits for easy damage on an enemy because if you send him away with slow, then they're way out of reach now for another follow up. So mock speed can keep him close if it calls for it. Also, if you're on fire, mock speed blows it off. And lastly, right stick up or just pressing circle will zoom in. Triangle will have you spin kick in place for great crowd control. So if there's a lot of flying enemies surrounding you or just enemies in general, or even a barrage of projectiles coming at you, you can use this to clear them out easy. And if you jump, you'll do a spiral attack upwards. You can hit those airborne enemies. If you start to zoom mid-air, you'll dive downwards having this crowd control splash damage on landing. Great to get to the ground fast while hitting people below. And you can combine slow to have your punches do a very powerful hit to a single target. Now for the defensive options I hinted at, if you get hit while in slow, having you automatically dodge and use ton of extra meter, if you zoom in afterwards, you'll pose, which is so stylish that it'll do damage to everything on screen. You'll even be invulnerable for a second too. If you get knocked back, zoom in right before landing to break your fall, quickly bouncing back up, ready to fight again, and you recover one heart of health. A great set of options that have specific purpose, but all of these require VFX meter to use them. Like staying a slow, for example, is a nice tool, but uses a lot of meter because it drains it over time. 
But if you're using slow and still get hit, you'll lose even more meter as punishment. You had all the time in the world to react and still manage not to choose the right option. So yeah, these VFX are strong, but risk reward is definitely tied into them. You don't want to completely empty it because mismanaging or get overly reliant on them will have you become a regular Joe. Can't double jump anymore, and of course can't use VFX abilities for a bit. Just gotta maintain with the pure basics as you let it refill past the first pip to get your suit back. Now the start of each episode, the VFX meter is reset. And in order to upgrade it, you need to jump around and collect pickups to increase it. Think of it like Mario. Collect coins, get a 1-up. Or crash how breaking all the crates is its own challenge. Plus you get a reward for doing that at the end. So think of it more as classic platforming incentive to collect items throughout the stage, add some variety, maybe a little more challenge, and gives you increased meter the more you pick up, which lets you use the effects more often. Because I don't really mind it resets each time, I think it's pretty fun. Onto the enemies, we have these jobbers who will either attack low or high. Pretty standard and teach you the basics of stance dodging and easy to use for knocking them around with slow. And if you pay attention, beat shuffle means low and shadow boxing means it's a high attack. Cowboys will twirl their guns before they fire them, a tried and true animation for gunfire. The swordsmen where dodging their attacks won't stagger them afterwards. You actually need to follow up that correct dodge with slow to keep them in that end lag of their last hit. Big old guys who can only be damaged from behind, so when they beat their chest, they're going to do a diagonal Blanca ball. Just catch their landing and lay the beat down, or if they lean back, they're winding up a punch. Just jump over it and, and open them up from there. We have vehicle mini bosses like helicopters, jets, or tanks. Swoop side to side, firing at you, but what we learn from cowboys, can slow time to see the bullets either hit them back or to just avoid them by sweeping under them. So at a time, launching those enemies into them is also a good option to do like uppercutting them or using kicks to send them diagonally into them. Now a great thing Kamiya does with enemies, he uses them as tutorials for bosses, just ways to get you thinking a bit. Like when you see projectiles falling from above and learn to reflect them, you'll take note of that. So when you see a boss do the same type of attack, you get an idea how to answer back. Of course the bosses have their own gimmicks that you haven't seen before like how the rhino charges across the screen after filling the whole room with fire. So if you pay attention, you won't be completely in the dark in how to fight them, and that's all because of the power of genius enemy design. Yep, that's beautiful Joe. This game is just full of creativity and uses personality from, from the start to the very last credit scroll. And the fact it uses the basis of movies to make fun and interesting mechanics around that idea of playing in this action movie is pretty awesome. So time to really show that punch connect or speed things up to get a fiery outcome. Then to have all of those things affect enemies and objects for both platforming and combat in different ways is just wild. Not really combo heavy with air juggles and all that, but more about enemy pattern recognition and knowing who to prioritize first. Maybe someone can set up a worse time for you, or you can use them to your advantage to crowd control. Or maybe sometimes it's just better to reposition instead. The combat is a solid because of that constant decision making. We have high low dodges, distinct art style, stages with their own mechanics to work around, solid enemy design, Short arcade requires a level of mastery of your small move list to take down distinct enemies and unique groupings and arenas to change it up. Uh, kinda sounds like Sea Fever to me. Yeah, damn good stuff. Yeah, the art direction especially stood out to me. With this Power Ranger, Super Sentai, comic book, Sal Seda look, a few of my favorite games of all time have that similar style to them, so I was immediately drawn to Beautiful Joe because of that. And to see how each stage is very distinct visually, and then to see how these stages use that to create set pieces of their own, to add another layer to the gameplay is pretty great. Like fighting in the streets, having you worry about these cars, or working up your way through this moving train to stop it, or slowly climbing to the top of this building one fight at a time. And I strongly stand by this, but when there's a stage just for a boss rush near the end, that's how you know it's a good game. Neo 1, Kirby Dreamland, Rondo of Blood, DMC3. Case closed. Oh, plus they'll always hype splash screen before each stage begins. Hagane, Rocket Knight, Ninja Gaiden. Bam. This is so much good here. Oh, no, we're not done yet because after finishing the game, you hop into New Game Plus having all those upgrades and abilities to use them on your next playthrough. And when you beat the game, you unlock Dante. There's just so much to dig into. And I did hear it was a tough game, so I started on Kids for my first run. But surprisingly, it wasn't bad at all. I honestly thought it was quite slow at the beginning, being a little too easy. So afterwards, I hopped immediately straight into adults mode and oh yeah. This is where the fun starts. Later enemies show up early on and we have all the upgrades from the first playthrough and the knowledge we gained along the way. The game just gets better the higher the difficulty goes. And don't be too harsh on yourself if it is too much, just take it slow. 
pay attention to enemies' patterns, and gradually learn one thing at a time. And remember this, things always go wrong once before you get to the happy ending. Just gotta stick around to see it for yourself.